All right, here's a homework problem we did. We had a uh, ball that's going to roll down uh, a roof at some inclination angle theta. So we used conservation of energy, uh, and we said that the kinetic energy at the bottom of the uh, roll is equal to the potential energy at the top of the roll. So at the top of the, uh, where it starts to roll, uh, it has potential energy of mgh. Then when it reaches the bottom of the roll, uh, it has both translational kinetic energy and it has rotational kinetic energy. So the total kinetic energy is the sum of both the translational kinetic energy and the rotational kinetic energy. Uh, the moment of inertia for a sphere is two-fifths mr squared, and I will replace my variable angular velocity with its linear equivalent, which is equal to uh, velocity of the center of mass divided by the radius. So when I plug those into the equation, uh, the r squareds cross off. Every term has an m, so that drops out. And I solve for the velocity of the sphere as it reaches the bottom of the, the slope. And we see that the velocity of the sphere, sphere depends only upon gravity and the height that it started from. The same thing goes over here if I did it for a cylinder. Uh, I still see the same thing, that the, the final velocity is not dependent upon the mass of the object or its radius. Uh, here are the four balls we'll use. We got this large steel ball. Uh, I've zeroed out my scale with a paper clip on there. That's just so my ball doesn't roll away on the scale. So the ball, 760.7 grams. The smaller steel ball is 44.6 grams. My marble, 5.1 grams. And this wooden ball, 11.8 grams. All right. So they're all solid spheres, different radii, different mass. I'm just going to give them a little bit of separation. Bless you. Amazing. Amazing. And I, I thought, well, let's not just stop there. <laughs> now, I don't have a long, a long enough ramp to put them side by side, but I'll just put them one in front of the other, and they should maintain that same spacing all the way down the ramp if they, in fact, roll at the same speed, right? So there we saw uh, the velocity did not matter on the radius or the mass of the ball. All the balls reached the bottom of the ramp at the same time, uh, showing that their velocity was the same. What I found interesting was if I use the equation 11-10 on page 280 of our textbook that shows the acceleration for a rolling object, uh, I went ahead and I uh, took the moment of inertia of a sphere and plugged it into the equation and came up with the simplified version of the acceleration. And if I use uh, equations of motion, because I know that the acceleration of the object is constant as it rolls down the slope, uh, I can use my equations of motion. It starts from rest. And I go ahead and plug in my expression for acceleration for A. D is the distance the object travels, which is L in my diagram. And I notice from this geometry here of uh, the setup that the height is equal to L sine theta. So down here, this L times sine theta, I replace it with H. And lo and behold, I see I get the same expression for the velocity uh, that I did using conservation of energy, the square root of 10 GH over 7. And... Using this equation and this method, I get the same answer.